Hello again, welcome to video four. In this video, we're going to practice using the IFM's National Historical Geographic Information System Repository. This repository is unique in that it provides access to spatially aggregated census data, which is data that summarizes individuals within particular areas. To protect anonymity, IFM's NHGIS only provides access to raw aggregate data. No individual level records are included within this repository. Let's go ahead and navigate to the IPAMS main page. All of the IPAMS data repositories are free to search, but unlike data.census.gov, you must create an account within each specific repository to download data. To create an account with IPAMS NHGIS, first navigate to that repository, click on Login, then click on Create an Account to Register. Remember, this registration will only allow us to download data within IPAMS NHGIS. If you want to download data from other IPAMS repositories, you will need to visit their pages and log in to your IPAMS account. Your previous account information will auto-populate the form for that specific repository, and you will just need to agree to the terms and conditions. Let's navigate back to the IPAMS NHGIS homepage and click on Get Data to be directed to a guided search. As with data.census.gov, we see various filters. If you knew the data set you were interested in, you could initially select that filter and only see those data outputs. But let's focus on browsing across data sets. First, let's choose a geographic level. Click the plus sign next to the geographic level to add it to your search query. You'll notice that we aren't able to select specific subsets of geographic levels. That's because most NHGIS files cover all areas of the U.S. and they do not create separate data files for each of those subsets. But once we download the data, we can easily edit it so that it only displays the information we are interested in, such as county-level data for Idaho. After clicking Submit, we can see that there are over 33,000 source tables, 379 time series tables, and 56 GIS or Geographic Information System files that meet this geographic filter. Source tables provide summary statistics, time series tables link statistics from multiple censuses, and GIS boundary files provide definitions of census areas for mapping and spatial analysis applications. Next, we can select the data year that we're interested in. Options in gray are unavailable due to previous filter selections. Click the years you're interested in, then click Submit. Again, we can see that the number of available source tables and GIS files changed based on this filter. And the time series tables are no longer available since we didn't select a decennial year. Also, next to years, we see a drop-down box with OR. This means that we are interested in data outputs from either 2012 to 2016 or 2013 to 2017. If we change this box to AND, no data outputs will be available, as a single data file does not include data from both of these date ranges. So let's change the drop-down box back to OR. After selecting a geographic level and year, we can move on to topics. We have two options within this filter. The table topic filter pertains to the types of variables in each table. For example, if we selected age, IPAMS would provide tables such as median age. In comparison, the breakdown filter would show us tables that are broken down based on certain segments of the population. For example, if we selected the breakdown filter for race, IPAMS would show us data sets such as age by sex with a race ethnicity breakdown option. Let's scroll down to and check the plus sign in the table topic filter area for educational attainment and poverty. And then click submit. Now we can see the source tables and GIS files that meet our filter specifications. If you want to remove any of the filters you selected, hover over the green check mark and click. You can also click Reset Filters to start a new guided search. To download data, click the plus sign next to the tables you are interested in to add them to your data cart. Click on the different tabs, such as GIS files, to add those to your cart as well. Now within the data cart box, let's click on Continue to move to the next screen. First, we have an opportunity to confirm our selections and either edit them or click Continue. Next, we can select our download options. I'm going to use the default table file structure and break down data type layout options, but you could change these based on your data needs. Finally, click Submit to generate your data extract. 
If you aren't logged in when you click Submit, you'll be prompted to log in at that time. After logging in, you're directed to the Extracts History page, which also includes a suggested citation for the NHGIS data you downloaded. IPUMS will send you an email when your data extract is ready to download, which could take a few minutes or longer depending on the file size. Once your data extract is ready, either navigate back to the Extracts History page or follow the link and instructions in the email. When we download the tables file, we can see that it includes the raw aggregate data. If we were to scroll down within this spreadsheet, we could identify counties in Idaho and only analyze data from those areas. The tables file also includes the codebook, which is like the data dictionary we downloaded in video 3. From the extracts history page, we can also download the GIS file. If you're interested in learning more about this repository, IPUMS NHGIS provides additional help via their user's guide. IPUMS also provides a variety of tutorials for their different programs. If you have any questions about using GIS data, as well as accessing ESRI software, ArcGIS, or Story Maps, please reach out to Bruce Godfrey, our GIS librarian. Coming up in video 5, we will discuss best practices for evaluating and citing data.